Hello, and welcome to Study Topics. This week, we'll be covering the muscles of mastication. Let's start off with a question. Which cranial nerve innervates the muscles of mastication? If you said the trigeminal nerve or cranial nerve 5, you're right. The trigeminal nerve is the largest cranial nerve in the body and contains both sensory and motor fibers. Its motor component innervates the muscles of mastication. We'll cover those in a few moments. To learn more about cranial nerves, check out in the show notes below to see two more videos to help you learn about cranial nerves. But let's get back to these muscles of mastication. These muscles are very important to understanding how the TMJ works. Are you able to list all four muscles of mastication? This should be an easy one for you. We have temporalis, masseter, medial, and lateral pterygoids. For your exam, we expect our students to know the origin, insertion, innervation, and action of all these muscles, as well as important features of each muscle. For example, do you know which muscle attaches to the TMJ's articular disc? This is an example of a key feature of a muscle that you need to know for your exam. The lateral pterygoid has two heads, the superior and inferior head. The superior head, or sometimes called the superior lateral pterygoid, attaches to the articular disc, whereas the inferior head attaches to the condyloid process of the mandible. Let's quiz you on a few more muscle actions. Are you able to answer which muscles elevate the mandible? The answer here is the temporalis, masseter, and medial pterygoids. Now, the masseter is the main mover in elevation. The masseter can become enlarged in patients who habitually clench or grind their teeth, such as bruxism. So if three of the four muscles cause elevation, which muscle would you expect to cause closing of the jaw? The only muscle that's left, the lateral pterygoids. Let's quiz you on another one. Which muscles cause jaw deviation? This is a tough one since each of the four muscles play a role in side-to-side -side movement. The key with jaw deviation is understanding which muscles are responsible for ipsilateral deviation versus contralateral deviation. It's small details like this that will help you on your exam. So one last question here. Which muscles cause contralateral jaw deviation? The medial and lateral pterygoids. Clinically, these are the muscles that are often affected when a patient grinds their teeth. All right, one more bonus question. There is one other muscle you should know for TMJ anatomy, and it has innervations of both cranial nerve 5 and 7. Do you know which muscle this is? Comment below and we'll let you know if you're right. Thanks for joining me today. Are you looking for help to prepare for your upcoming exam? Head over to ptprep.ca where you can learn all about our courses. If you still have questions, shoot us an email at info at ptexamprep.ca. Thanks for joining me today.